Hello, and welcome back to our summer series webinars. Today, I will be going over dual language work in the professional development division at PCYF. My name is Athena jimenez Vanallo, and I am your dual language and multilingual learner coordinator. The topics we will be talking about today are an update to House Bill 1445, the benefits of dual language learning, terminology, dual language and multilingual, the Fair Start for Kids Act or Senate Bill 5237, ongoing professional development efforts and next steps. For our first update, House Bill 1445 is now legislation under RCW 43216105. What this legislation calls for is that DCYF works with community partners to support outreach and education for parents and families around the benefits of native language development and dual language learning. Dual language learning means learning in two languages where the goal is bilingualism. DCYF is responsible for creating training and professional development resources on dual language learning, supporting English learners, culturally and linguistically diverse communities, strategies for family engagement and cultural responsiveness. Within existing resources, DCYF must support dual language learning communities for teachers and coaches. As I move through this webinar, you'll notice that I use the terms dual language and multilingual, sometimes interchangeably. Multilingualism is the coexistence of several languages. Dual language refers to programs, whereas multilingual should be used to refer to people. Multilingual is a more inclusive term that takes into account all of the language skills that a learner may have. Some of the research benefits of dual language learning are that multilingual learners have flexible brains that are always processing multiple languages and making cross-cultural and cross-linguistic connections. Increased cognitive capacity, academic achievement, and cultural awareness are also evident in multilingual learners. Dual language learning has also shown to strengthen self-perception and identity as identity is tied to language. Dual language programs are the most effective program for closing achievement gaps and some long-term benefits include a delayed onset of memory-related issues. With the passage of the Fair Start for Kids Act, or Senate Bill 5237, on May 7, 2021, lawmakers provided an opportunity to make childcare more accessible and affordable for all families in Washington state. Some of the ways the Fair Start for Kids Act supports dual language work is through the development of a dual language designation and funding for two language access support positions that will specifically support COVID-19 childcare relief and recovery in department programs or underserved providers. DCYF will hire two language access coordinators, one for Somali and the other for Spanish language support. By July 1st, 2022, DCYF must establish a dual language designation and provide subsidy rate enhancements or site-specific grants for licensed or certified childcare providers and ECAP or birth to three ECAP contractors. A dual language designation is in development with an internal group of DCYF stakeholders, as well as an external advisory group, which we will establish. So what does this mean? The process for a designation means defining what DCYF considers a dual language program, the process for becoming a dual language program, developing training and supports for dual language programs, and finally, funding for these programs. The designation will be established by July 1st, 2022 in collaboration with internal and external stakeholders. Since the passage of House Bill 1445 in 2017, dual language work has been informed by the community via community forum, site visits, and other outreach efforts. 
As a result of these partnerships and efforts, a comprehensive introductory dual language training was developed and piloted in 2018 and has been delivered all over Washington State since. Training continued during COVID thanks to contractors who provided a modified virtual version of the dual language training. The dual language training developed by iLabs includes six hours of learning and six hours of reflective community practice. Participants receive a toolkit with language enrichment materials such as books, puppets, toys, and more. In 2021, toolkits were expanded to include more variety and language diversity. Some languages we added include Russian, Somali, Japanese, and books that support indigenous language revitalization. Moving forward, we continue to expand our toolkit options based on provider needs. Our training efforts are also expanding. Coming soon is a hybrid dual language training, which provides participants and trainees more flexibility for receiving dual language training. We expect to pilot this hybrid option in the coming year and look forward to continuing our partnerships with training providers and moving the work forward. Some of our ongoing efforts include developing a dual language webpage that is coming soon. In addition, we continue to collaborate with the Indian Policy for Early Learning, or IPEL, to strategize ways that we can support native language revitalization efforts. DCYF is actively working with OSPI to align early learning and K-12 where appropriate and necessary. Our long-term outcome is the seamless transition between early learning and K-12 dual language learning. And finally, we are working to establish an external advisory group to inform a dual language designation. This external advisory group includes educators and stakeholders from across the state. If you are interested in being a part of this external advisory group, please email me directly at athena.jimenezmanalo at dcyf.wa.gov. My email address is on the screen and we are looking for participation from any and all who are interested. Some of the next steps and goals for dual language include increasing supports for early learning providers who speak languages other than English. We would like to continue coordinated efforts with OSPI to build alignment between early learning and K-12. We are working on establishing a dual language designation by July 1st, 2022. We will continue training delivery and piloting our hybrid training. We also want to explore how to expand dual language training into a tiered approach and create a micro-credential option for early learning providers. Partnerships with tribes to support language revitalization efforts remain one of our goals and priorities. We are also hoping to develop adult competencies for dual language programs and exploring recruitment strategies that will increase diversity among providers. Thank you so much for joining our dual language webinar. If you have any questions or would like to join our efforts, please contact me or the PD training team at the email addresses listed here. Thank you.